Comrades, I am Admiral Andre and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today is a fantastic day in the history of this channel. For the first time, well, I suppose you only do it once, we have reached 500 subscribers and that is to me almost unfathomable. So I want to say thank you to everyone and I know it's Kerbal Space Program that's responsible for the bulk of that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm still thinking what to do for this 500 subscriber milestone. You know, I draw a blank with these sorts of things. Hmm, maybe I'll show you like how I edit the videos or something. I'm really not sure. I'm so lost with that. But anyway, that's beside the point. I just wanted to say thank you again. Many, here's to many more adventures together. Now, of course, today, as I showed you the preview uh, yesterday, there was a uh, an idea, of course, to build the space shuttle. And I was originally saying in one of the earlier videos, I might want to start with building the whole traditional or the original plan of the STS. But then I thought, no, let's start with the with the way that it actually turned out. So today is episode one of our new series, and that is, or mini-series, to build the space shuttle. And we'll be looking at the orbiter itself in this episode. In the next episode, we'll be looking at the main tank, the external fuel tank, and possibly also the solid fuel boosters. I'm not sure if we'll be able to pull off both of them in the same episode. Maybe. We'll see. I, I can't predict that at this moment. But then we'll obviously have to do another episode of testing, because getting the space shuttle to work effectively is a very challenging and tricky thing, as I'm sure many of you will know if you've tried to build a space shuttle yourself. So I think then in the fourth episode we'll be doing the actual launch and uh, delivery of the payload. So I'm not sure what that payload will be yet, but I have an idea. Something to do with the 500 subscribers. At any rate, let's do the usual and have a look at some of the pictures and just get our bearings again. And then I will meet you in the VA, not the VAB, the space plane hangar. Of course, that's where we're starting today. So I'll see you in one moment, comrades. Ah, so comrades, I have my tea with me and we can begin our session by looking at all of the images here in Google Images and of course the various pages and so on. Now the great thing about the Space Shuttle is there are of course so many photographs available and so much information. Uh, that's a great thing. In uh, Kerbal Space Program we need more information and information is a good thing. So there we go. Now, of course, given our limitation again, we will have to take some shortcuts here and there. Unavoidable, I'm afraid. One of those is using a white main engine or main tank here, main fuel tank, instead of the orange one, because we do not have an orange tank of the appropriate size. That's unfortunate. Only the two meter parts allow us to have the, or two and a half meter parts allow us to have the orange exterior. So we will have to use the original configuration of the space shuttle, which is kind of nice actually. That was of course the, uh, like the first launch in 1981 and, uh, it was all white. So. That's basically what we'll be going for as much as possible. Now, of course, they decided to leave the paint because it weighed several hundred pounds. And of course, you don't want more weight on the thing. And also somewhere I read that that's, that actually showed how thin the fuel margins were on the space shuttle. But, uh, you know, that's one of the things. The space shuttle was, of course, not without its problems, but still it remains, I think, to this day, such an iconic craft. And having grown up with this, it's uh, something I look forward to building. Now, let's just go back to that other image. Uh, where was that now? So many of them. Not up there. Hmm, where did I see that now? Good grief, it's disappeared again. That's the thing with images. One moment you have it, the next it's gone again. I think it was down here somewhere. There, this one of course, just underneath. Hmm. 
It's interesting this headline here. A stronger, safer, better space shuttle 1982. Hmm. Unfortunately, it was not really uh, meeting those goals, but anyway. Okay, so let's just have a look at the orbiter. Let's ignore everything else today. We're just going to focus on the actual shuttle itself. So, if we have a look here, obviously the main outline here is is uh, dictated to us by the parts that we have in KSP, which is actually mimicking this very nicely. So, of course, we'll be using the Mark III cockpit and the round nose cone there. It has a very round shape there. I know this is just a diagram, but it's quite a faithful one, I think. Then, of course, the uh, delta wings there and the strakes as well. We'll be using the largest cargo uh, section there. And then, of course, we have the aft section with the tail, the three main engines, the uh, exterior sort of structure here where the orbital maneuvering system is attached, and, of course, the RCS system in the back. And uh, very important here, and this is actually uh, something we can see in the other images as well, the a line formed by the back of the wings there, including the flaps, actually meets the back structure of the shuttle there. So it does not overlap. So we're going to have to look at recreating that. And then, of course, we have this extra bit jut jutting out there to protect the engines from the heat of re-entry. So let's find some other images. Of course, we see many of them in uh, the upright configuration there. I'm just looking for a few others, specifically one that shows sort of the segments of the cargo bay. Now we can see that here, it's very faint, I, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. Unfortunately, this is not the largest image, of course, this shows all of the various space shuttles, but we can clearly see it has the four-segment uh, shuttle bay there. However, something very interesting that I saw, but now we're going to have to get a good side image. Britannica um, might not be the best picture there. I'm surprised Britannica still exists there. What about this one? Uh, this could work. I think this is not the best picture, but this is, is good enough to make the point here. Usually when I recreated the space shuttle previously in old versions of the game. Of course, this is something I've tried many times before with various degrees of success. But usually I used a bigger tank at the back, either two of the monopropellant segments or a bigger fuel segment there, a rocket fuel and oxidizer. However, when I started looking at the thing, because we have to keep in mind that we still have that attachment plate at the back for the main engines. Then that leaves us only basically the space for one segment there, not for two. I'll show you that when we get into the game. But I know this is now a 3D model, but this is still a very nice model. So if we have a look at this, you see there, the back section here is not long enough for a large fuel segment and the back attachment plate as well. So, there we'll be just using the one thin segment, and unfortunately we only have a monopropellant segment for that. But we'll be draining out all of the monopropellant and putting a fuel tank in. Now, why am I putting a fuel tank in? Let's just go to the space shuttle. I want to learn a bit more about the OMS, or the OMS as I call it for shorthand. Uh, fuselage, uh, because somewhere I read that it uses bipropellant. It's obviously not the typical liquid fuel and oxidizer, but that sort of fits better than with using liquid fuel and oxidizer for the ohms there. Upgrades and so on. Oh yes, the O-ring seal there. Let's see, where could we look at this? Orbital, orbital maneuvering system there. It uses uh, monomethyl hydrazine or something of that nature. I don't remember the full name there. And N2O4. Don't know what that is either, unless I have the name before me. But it's definitely a bipropellant there. So, uh, of course, it's not just liquid fuel and liquid oxygen. But we, again, have to work with the uh, limits that we have. 
That also will allow us to have more powerful Ohm's engines than the monopropellant engines, which are quite weak, actually. It's a pity we don't have a stronger one. Oh, well. Let's have a look at some of these uh, images here. This is a good one, and there's several other ones that show the back segment as well. Now, of course, we have the three main engines. Then we also have the tail which hangs over. You can see it very clearly there. The base of the tail actually hangs over the top engine there, which again reinforces my sense that the aft segment is too short to fit the whole tail on. So uh, we'll definitely be using a thin segment there. Then, of course, we have the Ohm's engines pointing up, upwards and outwards, so they're angled through the center of mass. Now, obviously, the center of mass on this craft will shift as the fuel shifts and as the payload is deployed, but because they still have a good gimbling range, it will be manageable. Of course, then we also have the RCS structures on the back there. We can see there's two pointing backwards, and then, of course, we have several on the side as well. Let's just have a look here. Now, here we can also see the structure that is the, there we go, hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide tanks. Now, I don't know if that's for the RCS or whether that was for the ohms, but either way. The thing is, we have this exterior structure here, and we have to try and recreate that as well. But you see, it obviously stops there where the... Uh, port opens or where the docking, not the docking bay, but the cargo bay actually opens. Then uh, that's also where the tail starts. And then let's just have a look here. Then of course we have the ohms, then we have the various RCS thrusters there. Let's just zoom in. Now it looks like we, if we can see here, there's four on the side and three on the top and two on the back. We'll just have to get some more images there. Then we have the body flap. Now, I don't know if the body flap was actually controllable or whether it was a fixed structure on the craft. That I'm not sure about. In our case, it's going to be a fixed structure, I think. But in any case, it protects, of course, the whole equipment or all of the equipment there on the back. And then, of course, the elephants and the wings and the strike and all of that. But there is another thing that we have to keep in mind when we want to establish the scale of the space shuttle. Specifically, the length of the aft section here again. Now, if we have a look here, of course, we've seen already the outer edge here of the back structure of the craft is where the wing outer line also joins with the craft there. However, then if we have a look here where the strike, in our case, of course, it's a strike. In the real world, it's all one thing. But where the strike actually joins, there's my phone buzzing again. Let me just move it out of the way here. Where the strike joins the wing right there. Now, of course, this is not the best for showing that. We are in the second segment of the cargo bay from the back. So that will certainly help us to get the positioning right here. Now let's have a look. Of course we have forward control thrusters as well, but uh, we can't see all of them clearly here. Let's just see, what else could we see? There's looking like a structure there, so if the payload fits only a certain segment, then of course there's uh, some kind of barrier there. Interesting. Of course there's radiators on the cargo doors here, but we cannot recreate that, so we might just put them inside the cargo bay. Electrical system and fuel cells, so interesting fuel cells, of course, on the front there, so we'll be using fuel cells, although we could easily put solar panels inside the edge there of the cargo bay. That's actually a good addition, since the space shuttle was continuously evolving throughout its lifetime, so we could do that. Let's just go back to the main images here. Now, again, this is a model here, but uh, we can just start by looking at this to see the front part of the maneuvering system. So we have three ports there. Could we have a bigger look at this? We have three ports there that fire upward and three that fire forward. Then we also have two that fire downward and two that fire side to side. Now, 
in this sense again we're going to have to take some liberties because our place anywhere rcs ports do not fit flush with a craft structure like these do of course these are just holes in the structure and of course inside we have the various rcs ports so the nozzle is literally buried into the craft there in our case they'll definitely be sticking out but that's one of those things now in this case we could see that the upward firing jets there they do angle forward slightly but i'm thinking in our case we can make them fire directly straight up because that will make the maneuvering for docking much easier of course in this case if you're moving down you're translating downward as we're looking at the craft now then of course you're going to fire those jets but then they're going to start pushing the craft backward as well so in Kerbal Space Program, of course, in the real world, they had computers to work these things out and control everything very precisely. But in our case, that's not possible. So we have to make it as easy as possible for ourselves. Uh, if we have a look at the back, we can see there definitely the back part of the RCS structure there fits flushly with this bigger structure. And then we have three ports there firing directly upward and four firing to the side now i think there's also three firing down there because the craft still needs to be able to translate upward as well uh, let's see is there much more that we can see here we know that the wheels attach where the wings attach to the body of the craft so obviously we'll have to look at the center of mass to help determine exactly where we want that but it's not on the outer part of the wing then the forward wheel is on this front part of the nose, so in front of the windows, as we can see there. Now, I think that's pretty much all that we want to see here. Let's just see, is there anything more? Um, it's always useful because I, I keep referring back to the images as I'm building the craft, but you can't always follow along because you just see the game still. So if we want to see anything more, we have to do it now. We're going to look at the solid fuel thrusters or boosters and uh, the outer tank later uh, in another episode. Let's see here. Of course, the arm. The arm is another thing I cannot do unless you use uh, the, like the Kerbal Attachment System mod or something. But for stock KSP, that is not possible. I'm not sure what that structure is there. Hmm. Now, the other thing is, of course, we can see here on the bottom, it's so smooth here the wings merge into the body perfectly there of course it's all one structure in our case it's not going to be so smoothly of course we don't have this option of molding things perfectly let's just have a look and i see another side view i saw one somewhere not sure if we can see what we want to see here now this is of course a space shuttle simulator on the app store so we don't want to rely on this too heavily but we can see of course the wings are sloped towards the back now we'll be playing around with the angle of the wings to help move the center of lift to the correct position so that will depend on how the craft evolves in terms of its mass the other thing i just wanted to see i'm not sure if we can find that now but obviously I know that the Buran was an automated space shuttle. We'll be doing that at some point as well. I'm just wondering if the actual space shuttle was ever uh, evolved, you know, towards the end of its life to also have automated capability. I'm not sure. I'm sure somebody will be able to tell me, but I think in our case it will just be easier to stick to the original and not have an automated capability so we will always have to have crew on the spacecraft i think that's pretty much it we can start the building i just want to see the ports on the back again we can always just search for the aft of the space shuttle now that doesn't exactly show it but this is a very good image as well we can see here of course how the ohms engines are angled inwards and uh, of course offset from the main sort of vector there so in actual fact when the craft is in orbit and we want to burn prograde 
the center of our thrust is going to push us slightly down as well. So we'll have to keep that in mind. But this is very stable, actually. It works very well. Then if we have a look at these structures on the back here, we see this big structure that is on the side of the back of the uh, shuttle. It fits very flushly with the back of the you know, the whole back of the shuttle, uh, talking in circles here, but I think you know what I mean. It's not jutting out, except the bottom part where the RCS system is attached. Now, of course, I can't recreate this kind of shape, so we'll be using a circular shape there, but uh, we see it's on the bottom outer part of this structure. Now, again, the same thing. This is almost like a half circle, but it's sort of elongated as well. Now, in my case, we'll just be using a, a circle again, so a fuel tank for that. I just want to see where we can see the bottom part. There we go. Uh, what is this specifically? Enterprise there. This was, of course, the test bed. But we see there now, of course, these are placeholders, but there on the bottom is where the three ports are that would fire downwards there. So we can uh, try and recreate that as well. The last thing that I want to see is just where the parachute attaches when uh, the craft does its landing. Let's search for landing. Okay, now this is a good one. In our case, we'll just be using a drogue chute, not a full parachute, I think. That definitely attaches actually quite to the tail, to be honest. So it's to the back of the tail there. Very interesting. One big parachute to the back of the tail. There we see the same thing. So we'll be recreating that as well. Now, is there anything else? I don't think so. From this point on, we can just start building the craft. We can see the wheel there on the front. This is a quite a large image there. So it opens up this whole front segment there. So it's sitting quite forward on the nose. Then, of course, the wheels attach there where the wings uh, move into the body, basically. Now, actually, there is one more thing I want to see. Let's see uh, just a normal space shuttle again. I want to see those segments again of the cargo bay. This is a good one, even though it's not the biggest image, but this is actually a great one. So we see very clearly the four segments of the cargo bay. Now, if we had to judge where the strike will move into the wing, it's about there. And that's halfway or in the middle of the, the second segment from the back. So that's a very good indicator there. Hmm. Okay, comrades, I think that'll do. Uh, it's been 22 minutes already. Can you believe it? Let's get into the building. This is, of course, a very complicated craft, one of the true marvels of engineering. So uh, in Kerbal Space Program, it's only right that it's also quite a challenge. So, comrades, now that we've had a look at that, let's see what magic we can work here. Oof, that's some reckless driving there. Good grief, there's no rules of the road inside the uh, space plane hangar, I see. At any rate, we start, of course, with the Mark III cockpit. There, that's the easy part. This gives us the whole uh, outline and everything here. Now, of course, as I said in the discussion just now, we can very easily put a pro core inside the uh, cockpit here, very easily. But I think it's more in line with the spirit of the space shuttle not to do that, just because that means we must have a crew on board in order to have the spacecraft function. Of course, the Buran is a whole different beast in that regard, but maybe we can do several versions of the space shuttle. The second version can have the solar panels and then the remote guidance unit so that we can send this thing up into space automatically. That's a very useful thing, I think, especially if we want to rescue some crew. And in KSP, that's always a real possibility. At any rate, the nose cone is, uh, there's only one option. It has got to be the aerodynamic nose cone, and uh, that rounds off the shape there very nicely. Now, we'll save the RCS for a bit later. Let's just get the outline right here. So the next thing is, of course, the cargo bay. This is all very easy stuff first. 
So there we go, the four segment cargo bay and that attaches directly to the back of the Mark III cockpit there. However, now we get to the thing. What I used to do, as I've mentioned now, let's actually search Mark III. That helps us. You see it narrows everything down. They actually put the thud under Mark III as well. So I guess they want us to use this for the ohms, but we will, of course, be different as usual. Now, as I used to do this, it was either two of the monopropellants or a rocket fuel so of course liquid fuel and oxidizer which is the same width there or length and then of course the engine mount at the back but this creates a very long structure on the back of the craft as we can see let's just do a boilerplate test again we'll take the wings of course there's only one option here i love it when at least things are easy like this so then we have the big S delta wing on the back. So we do not put snapping on for that. And we double it, of course. Let's just throw on the ailerons and uh, flaps and things here on the back. So elevon. So we start, of course, with a big S elevon one. Snapping is on again. And then it's just a case of playing around with the various keys. Of course, the other one is the big S Elevon 2. Very simple. So in this case, of course, I don't want this thing clipping into the body of the craft. So we'll just leave a small gap right there. And I think also I don't want this point sticking out there. So let's move it to the very outer edge like that. And then move this one up a bit as well. So we have a little bit of clearance there between the wing and the body, or the flaps and the body. Now, let's move this thing forward. So, snapping off again, and we saw roughly now, this is again just a test, that the outer line there meets up with the back of the engine mount. Now, let's have a look. Actually, this might work now that I'm thinking about it. Where's the strike now? Hmm. It's a possibility, you know. So the strike joins the craft roughly there, and that is in the second segment, but you see it's a bit more... Actually, if we look at this as the point, then that's on the border between the back segment and the second segment. So it does need to be a bit more forward there. And if we look at where the strike ends, it's not even in the halfway point of the first segment of the cargo bay. But if I just go back to the Google Images again then it almost joins the cockpit. Uh, no, that's a Lego one. I don't want a Lego one. The front of the wing actually does touch the back of the cockpit, so it's more like that, you know? Of course, we still have a, a ladder there, so we don't want it much more forward than that. But there's a very clear gap here, so we're only going to use one segment in the back. Definitely. Okay, that settles that. Now, unfortunately, if we search Mark III again, there is only one fuel tank that is this diameter, and that is the monopropellant tank. So that, of course, means we have to use it. All of the other ones are either bigger or double the size, as we've seen now. So let's get rid of one of these. Of course, I already have one there. And then throw on that. So that now creates, I think, a more accurate length there. Now, this is, of course, not going on meters and all of that. This is purely on a visual approximation of how the thing looks. So, this, uh, let's just have a look. Of course, we empty out all of the monopropellant here. So, this is a purely structural element here. This does not have any fuel tank or anything. So, we can put things inside of it now, safely. So, in that regard, let's look at the tail. That's the easiest thing, I think. Big S space plane tail fin. Very, very simple again. They give us the exact part there. So now, of course, I just have to move the camera around a bit. But in this case, we definitely want snapping and one-time symmetry. And of course, it has to join exactly where this cargo bay door will open. If it's in front of that, it's going to clip into the doors when they open. So you see, that's not good there. Let's move it back a little bit. 
just like that. So that's as far as I can take it without making that little gap there bigger because it still moves into the tank there. Let's just have a look again if I move it slightly forward. You see, I don't want this, this bulge there. Mm -mm. Oh, good grief, it's cases of holding my breath again. Hmm. Almost too scared to make a move. Good grief, is that as far as I can go? There, that's as far as I can go. Alright, so that settles that, comrades. Now we see the tail fin does indeed hang over the back, just as we saw in that other image. So this tells me I'm on the right path in terms of the width of the back here. So that's a very encouraging sign there. Now, of course, the easiest part on the back is to throw on the engines. Uh, of course, they want us to do it in three times symmetry. As you will see, there is a snapping point, And if I press X, voila, there's the three engines. But I will not do it like this. You know me by now. Because when we need to angle the engines, and we will have to do that every time we have a different payload. And in that case, and this is also why you really, really need the Kerbal Engineer Redux, because that tells you how much your thrust or your center of thrust is offset from your center of mass. And this is, of course, the very definition of the space shuttle. So if we roll the thing now, let's just F that again. You see what happens now. This is bananas. It doesn't do anything because each movement is offset by another movement. So we do not want this. Mm -mm. What we want is two times symmetry and just attach attaching the, the engines to the plate there. We're not going to use the snap points for this, but we still want them generally in the right area. Let's just have a look. Of course, it's difficult to judge precisely where the snap points are. But I'll say like that, that's generally in the right area. Then, of course, we just do a one-time symmetry, and here we have to uh, use the snapping to get it in the center, of course, but we don't snap to the node. Just like that. That gives us the three engines in the back. And, of course, we have to make sure there is a roughly equal space between them. Just like that. Now, if we roll them to angle our thrust, the following happens. You see... That's exactly what we want. And then we get fine control by having the last engine on its own, of course. So I'm not going to worry about this right now, but this is roughly what it will look like when we do the launch. But at least the engines are in place now. So that does that, comrades. Of course, the next step is throwing the wings on. And we've done this already, so I'm just going to grab them. And I was happy with the spacing there of the... Uh, various flaps. Let's just get the thing in line there. Now here is of course where we can't get the nice flat smooth bottom of the space shuttle. We have to make do with this rounded edge here. That's just how it is. But I think this is a good place for the wings to attach. So if we now look, the line meets perfectly there at the back of the engine mount and of course the thing is, it does clip into the shuttle bay there a little bit. Now, if you were eagle-eyed, and I don't want to steal Matt Lowne's phrase there, but you could have seen in the uh, little preview that I did in the last episode of the shuttle that this was exactly what happened there. Now, we can play around with that and move it slightly outward, but this will not interfere with the payload, so that does not jut out far enough to actually interfere with the payload, so we don't have to do that. But let's just have a look. I'm not sure how this will look, actually. Let's move it out a little bit. Of course, the more we do it, the more we increase the gap on the bottom there. As long as it's obviously still attached. But you see what I mean on the bottom there. There's a gap there. But now it's not clipping into the craft's body there. The other option is to move the wing up so it sits flat with this line here. But then I'm not too sure if it's now a bit too high. 
Let's just go back up again. This could work though. Actually, I might decide to stick with this. It's difficult to say. But let's go with this for now. Of course, we still have to put the strike on as well. And it is waiting for us right there. So in this case, of course, we are doing it with the uh, snapping off again. And I try to use... You'll see there's this line on the strike right there. I try to use that as my guideline for attaching to the wing there. And of course, we just have to judge more or less that it's in the middle. So now we get the other problem. You see, by moving the wing up, we've moved the strike up as well. And now it leaves this gap here. So the wings are almost on the middle midpoint of the craft now, instead of on the bottom, as we saw with the... Uh, image there. I'm not not convinced yet what to do about that. One possibility is to move the wings down even if they clip into the cargo bay but to try and put them smoothly on the bottom here. We could even angle them slightly up on the edge. Actually, that's pretty flat, but that's not bad there. Hmm. We have the same problem again. There's a gap there, you see. The bottom part of the wing is not even touching the craft. Unfortunately, there are things like that that we'll have to live with. There's just a limitation of KSP in that regard. You see, the wings are slightly angled up, but I like that. Now, if we move it so that the bottom part of the wings are actually attached to the craft, we have to move it in that far. Now, look at the flap there clipping into the craft's uh, body there. So, this won't work. This will not do, comrades. Even though the shape on the bottom is now more appropriate. I think in that regard, ultimately, we just have to go with where... You see where the thing flips up like that? That's going to have to be the point where we attach. That's a, a relatively good sort of compromise there. But let's try moving the wing up a little bit like that. Actually, I want to have a look at that image again that we saw off the bottom of the craft where it was so smoothly attached there. And the reason for that is I just want to see if the wings are angled upward. Now, of course, I'll search forever and not find the image again. Mm. Where are you? Let me just have a look at this. Well, if I look at the image, I found it finally. It does look... But that's because we're seeing the bottom here that's curved slightly. But it does look like the engines point slightly upwards. So, in this case, it's not super obvious, but I'm thinking maybe it's better not to do that. Hmm, that's too much. Then again, I want to see what the aerodynamic effects of that will be. Still, of course, we have this little gap there, but at least the wheels will attach there, so that will sort of hide it a little bit. Now, if we attach the strake, again using that line for guidance and up like that. We could even move it a little bit out. Then we almost get to the back of the cockpit here. So this again shows me we're on the right track. And now they merge somewhere in the middle of the second segment. But I think it's a bit too far. Okay, that's a bit better. I don't want it looking like a separate structure there, even though, of course, it is. So now we still have this upward angle. What's the result of that? Hmm, that's actually not bad, to be honest. Hmm, well, we still have some more work to do, so that will change. The main thing is, of course, the back plate here now that protects the engines, and, of course, that thing has to be very heat-resistant. Now, I've thought about this. We could use the structural panels for that. This, of course, is not an aerodynamic element, so it will not actually have an effect on our center of lift. 
which is maybe a good thing because the test one that I did that I showed in that uh, promo video was actually a wing element or yes one of these stationary ones not the flaps I think the connector type D now in this case we can't use snapping because of the angle there oh, we can okay that's that's better then no nope, you see mm -mm. so snapping off and I just want this thing to be more or less flat on the back so here we have to guess where the midpoint is but we can work a bit more on this now this has a very real effect on our center of lift there as you saw it moved a little bit forward but the on the other hand it's a good thing because we can kind of manipulate the center of lift very easily now so I'm not sure I'm thinking it might be better to use this wing structure and that's pretty much the right length there but we might use two of them because I don't like the fact that we have this gap on the side however because of this black segment on the end it's not going to work so well to use two but we can try of course if I just add two we're going to get severe clipping there you see this is not what I want that is bananas absolutely crazy so that means we have to attach them individually so in this case I'm just judging more or less where the thing fits nicely with the end there and now we just have to get it again approximately because when you do them individually you can never get them exactly on the same level so you avoid that kind of insane clipping effect but they're still pretty level so now we just move it in and we do the same kind of inspection here like thusly so I think that actually does work better we'll just have to when we move them move them uh, in the same way so let's put on the wheels now uh, of course this is a very uh, complex craft so it does have many parts to it so we're still going to be building for a while here now in this case I like to use this gray forward segment because we saw that the uh, the wheel actually the, the open part there almost touches the front of the nose cone but now in this case hmm it does slope upwards a little bit I definitely want to use the LY35 because if I look again at the images specifically of the space shuttle landing we can clearly see the the front wheel is a single wheel of course on either side there but still it's a single one the back one is also a single one now that's interesting I was convinced it was a double hmm am I learning something new here it's very possible let me just search for this again shuttle landing indeed it is I think it's the Buran that has a double on the back. How interesting is that? Okay, that does change things a little bit now. Hmm. Because you see, this is a triple, of course. It has a row of three doubles. Then this one is a double. I was going to use that one, but change of plans. We'll use the medium landing gear for the back then. We might use it for the front as well. Of course, the real shuttle has bigger wheels on the back than on the front, but again, it's either the tiny one or the medium one, so not the biggest choice there. We'll use two and we'll attach it right there where the wing attaches to the body of the craft. Like thusly. Hmm, that's actually not bad. I don't like how they angle outward, of course. It's now because the wings are slanted as well. I'm still not sure what to do about that, but we'll do some tests. Okay, that's more or less. Now it's inward now. It's difficult to judge here. Mm -mm. 
Okay, that should do. So on the back we are, we, we are using those medium ones now. You can see they do look a little too small in comparison with the craft. Now the medium ones, what do they say about the uh, stress tolerance? 9,000. The large ones have a stress tolerance of 18,000. Also, it has a lot more braking torque. Uh, we'll have to do some landing tests, but if we're landing on an uneven terrain, those wheels are going to snap. I can almost promise you that. Now, in this case, let's just close this thing. I don't want this thing sticking out like that. So we have to roll it a little bit. And move it around. I still want the thing sticking out a little bit. I know the real thing was smooth again with the bottom of the craft, but in our case, if we want to click on the thing, we will have a bit of a hard time there. Like that, it's still relatively smooth. Now, if we deploy this, you see I'm already having a hard time. There, at least we can still find it without moving into the craft. So when it's extended, of course, it juts forward like that. Now, the real thing did not have that. If I just look at the landing image again, yes. If anything, it actually looks like the wheel pointed a bit backwards, but it did open like this with the main part to the front. So the orientation is correct there. I'm just not convinced these are the correct wheels on the back. We'll see. We'll see. We'll do some tests. I will slap some jet engines on this thing just for testing purposes, of course. The thing is now, we have still got to put some fuel on this thing and, of course, build the aft structure and build the RCS segments. So to do that, let me take a one minute break and uh, I will see you again in a split second from your perspective. Okay, comrades, I think that will do. Now, let's actually start by attaching the parachute right here on the back of the tail. That's a very easy thing. So we'll be using the Mark 12R radial mount drogue chute. Not a full parachute, but actually, hmm, is it going to attach to the tail now? That's the other question. As you see, the size is actually great for that. This will also help us to survive, if you can believe it or not. If we have a fail failure with the landing, I did that test, of course, that I showed you in the video, but I did not show you the landing because it was a crash because the center of lift was not correctly balanced for the craft. But I used the drogue chute and it slowed us down enough to actually survive. So this is a very important element of the survivability of the craft. Specifically because the Mark III cockpit is so impact resistant. Is that right? Hmm. Almost. Unfortunately, I can't use snapping for this. So we have to guess more or less where the center is. I think that's that's quite close there. So now I'll just move this down and inward there. I just want the outer plate of the uh, parachute sticking out because that's what pops off then in our case and deploys the parachute. So there we are. Parachute is ready. It must of course be above the engine there. So what's next? Next I think we have to put on the back of the OMS here or the OMS system. Uh, those tanks that we saw. Or actually maybe we should do the fuel tank first here. That will be easier without the outer structures on already. Now, of course, in this case, we'll use our magic friend, the cubic octagonal strut again. That's our catch-all if we have an emergency where we want to attach something. Now, of course, we have these, this node here in the docking, uh, or the, I keep calling it the docking bay, but we, of course, do use this for docking as well. But the cargo bay, but we want that for cargo, to attach cargo, not the actual 
fuel. So let's just move into that little monopropellant tank. Now we see the this is the back of the engine mount. So we're going to attach it right here in the middle. Now, of course, in this case, we want it on that level there. But when you get to the center, the snapping basically nullifies and it doesn't snap to the center anymore. Of course, it doesn't have to be absolutely precise here, but it does help to get it right, more or less. If I just use one, it's impossible to say where the middle is because there's no snapping point there. So do the double again. Okay, that does look roughly right. Okay, we'll use that, comrades. If it's off by a degree or so, it's not going to impact anything. But I think that looks that looks right there. It's on that circle there. Okay, so with that done, let's now get the fuel tank. So obviously our fuel tank is going to have to be at least no wider than this monopropellant tank. However, we do get a bit of room to play because the outer edge here of the... Uh, engine mount where the engines are attached means there's a little bit of a space in between there in the engine mount that we can also use so that's very important let's go to fuel tanks now for this i want the two and a half meter fuel tanks specifically is it this one now i think this one might work Yes, you see, it looks like it might be too big, but this actually fits precisely in there. Now, of course, in this case, we don't have the other engines on yet, but this will give us several hundred meters of delta V. So this is exactly what we want. Now, of course, we need to get this to the attachment point like thusly. So if you're struggling of course to get the attachment point you just use the ALT key and it will snap there. Now however we still have a problem so let's pick the move tool and take the tank there. Actually I need to open the cargo bay. It's sticking out into the cargo bay. Now I'm not going to move the strut there so we'll just move the fuel tank. Of course turn snapping off and just move it so it's inside there and it's not sticking out on the back now we know this is an empty space in between here so I feel I feel good about doing this normally I won't clip things into other things if it's not sensible but I think this is very sensible indeed so now we've done that however I still want a bit of extra fuel and monopropellant because now we only have the monopropellant in the main cabin area which we will keep, but we want more than that. This is a heavy craft that we want to move around. And of course we have no monopropellant in the back now. So to do that, we need, of course, the radial tanks. So first of all, let's use some baguettes, just to get more fuel in the thing. More is always better, comrades. More boosters, so obviously more boosters need more fuel. So we'll do this in two times symmetry and it's very difficult to judge here but you don't want this thing sticking out of course. So we'll put two there and we're not going to clip them into each other. Two there. And they're not sticking out there and they're not sticking out there so that's good. That is 24 liquid fuel each extra. Let's of course do the same on the bottom. more or less thusly. It's difficult to judge exactly, but you can see clearly there, they're not clipping into each other. Now, I would like very much the monopropellant. So that will be the Stratus 5 cylindrified monopropellant tanks. And we'll do exactly the same thing. You can't put them on the side though. That's why I started on the bottom and the top. Because if we attach them to the side of the tank, they stick right through the edge there, which we do not want. We don't want to give away our secrets. So we're going to do it... Okay, there is another baguette there now. Might have to remove that one. Hmm. Might have to remove that one. What about right at the bottom here? 
No, there's no more space there. I'm not going to put it there because then I'm clipping into the tank. Uh, hmm. Let me just get some room to view here. We could put them on like that, possibly. That seems to work. So, diagonally here, not straight back, forward and back. Yes, that works, and there's still room to attach it here. Since this is still part of the tank. Of course, we just don't want them clipping into each other. That's, that's a, oh, good grief. I've messed it all up. Let's just put it down there and Alt Z that thing. Did it fix it now? No, it did not. Alt Z again. You see, these are the cases where the undo does not work. So now I just have to find the attachment point again. Why are you not attaching? There we go. So this is actually maybe easier to build it like this first, before you start moving it in. Actually, let's do that. Man, this uh, camera is not always easy to control. But like that, I can live with it, because we're not clipping tanks into each other, except on the bottom, which I don't want. So let's roll this thing, Alt again, and now we can work on the top. Obviously in two times symmetry again. And there we go. So now this thing is looking a bit better. And it's still balanced both ways, so uh, it shouldn't throw the weight off. We could now start attaching some batteries to this thing. I think that might be a good idea. We saw obviously that the uh, fuel cell was somewhere in the front here. But for us, I think uh, we can start putting battery packs on the back as well. Or we could just do that on the front. Maybe we'll just do that on the front. I'm not sure what the electrical system of the shuttle was like, but I'm sure the wiring was a nightmare. But uh, maybe this is enough on the back. But there's space there, and I never want to waste space. Could we put the Z400s there? I think we could get away with it. Yes. We could even do it in uh, in double. So it's not in the tank there. And it's not in the tank there. And uh, very clearly we can do that. Okay. Let's just now do another pair on the back. Again, if we have space, why waste it? There we go. So now we have boosted our electric charge to 3,700. Running out in a shuttle is not what we want, ever. So in this case, just spacebar to get the thing back to its original orientation. And Alt again to snap there. And then we just move it forward again. Et voila. We can actually go quite far back there. Let's just get it in the middle. Now, of course, this shifts our center of mass a great deal, but we have to keep in mind most likely that tank will be almost empty by the time we come home again. But that adds... Uh, how many? Mo how much monopropellant do we have? 300? I know that's not a lot, but we could add some more on the front there. We still have the monopropellant jets on the front. And, of course, a lot of electric charge. So I think that works very well. Now... Comrades, there is one more thing that I should mention in terms of the shuttle, and, and I know the wings are clipping into the cargo bay again there. Mm. We might have to live with that, because the more I move it outwards, the bigger I make this gap on the bottom. You see, it's a difficult juggling act. At any rate, the other thing I want to say, if you want to make the shuttle easier to control, uh, in this case... You know, I'm usually opposed to using the reaction wheels, but with a space shuttle, I do make an exception. 
Now to make this thing easier we can put a big reaction wheel into it but first I won't do that because I just want to see how the thing will act without it. But I think we might leave the one on the front active. You know that's the thing in the booster we're gonna have tons of reaction wheels because I can't gimbal the engines to the extent that they could do in real world so to get the thing balanced nicely is an absolute impossibility without those reaction wheels but in the craft itself I think we'll just keep the wheel authority that we have of course the, all the offset thrust vectors means that we have torque like this and this is again the thing that I was talking about earlier why you need the engineer redux and you can't always balance the torque exactly because the center of mass shifts as fuel moves and as the payloads get ejected and so on. And in that case, you need the reaction wheels to offset the extra torque. In real life, they could adjust the, th the vector of the engines, of course, but I can't do that because I can just move W and S and the engines will vector, but then the whole thing goes haywire. So actually, I am going to put a reaction wheel in. You might consider this a cop-out, but in that case, you are always welcome to remove it there. Now, we should, of course, have the snapping of the tank. So, voila, we just snap onto the tank there. Of course, now I have to move the whole thing back still. I'm not sure if we'll be able to fit it in here. But we shall find out. Hmm, no, it doesn't work quite well. We might have to do it on the front then. Although the center of mass is much closer to the back than the front, so it would be better here. Let's use a smaller wheel then. I'm not sure if that will help. So they're still quite thick here. Mm -mm. I don't want to clip the wheels into the tanks. That I will not do. That, comrades, is a bridge too far. What about the small one? That works, and it's buried inside the thing. That just gives us a tiny little bit more. Talk for five is not going to do much, but... You see, that's the thing. So we have right now an offset if we fire the main engines of 2264, and this has only a five torque, so... It's almost not worth putting it on, but eh, we have space, so let's not waste it. We could even put more batteries here. Let's do that, actually. On the front of the tank. So, in this case, I'm actually going to press R to change the symmetry and just put 8 times symmetry. Press R again. And that gives us 4,500 battery uh, power there. So, we're making progress, comrades. We're making progress. The next thing, of course, is the uh, structure on the back here. Now, in this case, I've done a bit of experimentation uh, to make that previous video. And the best thing I could come up with, actually, was one of the new parts. This one. The... Uh, FLA-151L fuel tank adapter. Now, in this case, of course, we'll be emptying out the fuel here. Well, we could keep some of it, but part of this is going to clip into the rest of the structure. But, of course, in the real world, they could cut it in half, as we saw with the images there. But we have our limitations, unfortunately. So, again, we turn to our magical friend, the cubic octagonal struts. Now, I think we can just start by putting it there. And then we attach that. This, oh good grief. Double please. This does create that uh, appearance quite nicely. Obviously we can't match it exactly because it's round and all of that. But if I look at an image, I just Google Space Shuttle Aft. Then that's the one that we looked at. We can see it attaches almost right next to the wings and then if we imagined they weren't there it's uh, sort of um, where would it attach actually there was a place I could see that uh, a side view it's attaching almost perfectly on the line where the cargo bay doors open so you can see if we just close this 
that line right there runs straight through. Now you can see that part is jutting beneath it. So this gives us a very good guideline. Now of course we're not going to leave the front open like that. But uh, let's start playing around with it. In this case I just use the struts as the point that I control. So let's move the thing. Mm, no snapping. Move it up a little bit. Now, of course, I don't like this appearance on the back here, so we will change that. Hmm. That's almost right, actually. It's almost attaching right next to the uh, tail there. And right now, if we draw a straight line, it is almost exactly in the place where it should be. I think it just needs to be offset inwards a little bit. To about the middle of the tank there. This is all guesswork, comrades. There is no uh, precise solution for this. I just don't want it looking like it's curving back in again. Like that, you know. Maybe like that. We'll look at it a bit more in a moment. I just need it roughly in place there. Now, the next thing, we could actually change the color of this. Hmm. That doesn't look bad, though. I kept it with the original for the previous video, but that actually does not look bad. Kind of fits the theme, the black stripe there. But now, to end off the... Uh, the front there, because we want this thing sitting as flush as possible with the edge of the engine attachment mount, so it leaves a little bit of a gap there. Now, we can't use the aerodynamic nose gun. I know it's just attaching to the other end of the uh, strut there, but that's fine. Because they stick out like this. Uh, local, I think. You see, that still protrudes there, and we don't like protrusions. So if I stick it in like that, we still get a bit of a gap here. Although this is not terrible. What if I move it? Oh no, that's not going to work. No, the thing I did with that demonstration was I used one of the... FLA5 adapters. They're not quite as round as that, but they do give a nice finish to the front here. Ah, it's double again. Seems my voice is disappearing for some reason. Uh, let's move it in there. So, of course, we fit it flushly to the thing like that. Now, that finishes it off actually quite nicely there. Of course, it's not as round as I would have liked, but this is the best solution I could come up with. So, <clears throat> let's just have a look. There's nothing else, because this is the flattest nose cone that we've got. No, that will have to do. That will have to do. Ah, one of those balances. Of course, the back is still not finished here. So, in this case, I use one of the uh, engine plates. Of course, we have to find the right one. That one. So, if we do it in double symmetry, it looks like that. But that doesn't look like as nice as the real thing, because the back here is as dark as the back of the engine mount. Of course, again, I can't match that exactly. But we flip them upside down. And then it at least gives it a more grey appearance. Of course, we disable the staging there. And that sort of looks more like a, a thing where you would attach an engine right there. Of course, the line is not exact here. Now, in this case, again, this is why you really need the reaction wheels. Because you see where our center of mass is right now. Of course, when we have a payload, it will be better... Ah, let's pick something, anything. Just attach it right there. Then that shifts the center forward. But you see, this thing is pointing, if we follow this black line here, it's pointing right there to the cabin, so it's going to spin. 
It still has a talk. Let's just disable these things right now. Mm, no, what's happening? Well, put the thrust limiter to zero. There. So, of course, now we come to the issue of the back engines. Then we can get back to the center of thrust thing. Now, if I just have a look again at this image of the back of the space shuttle, we can very clearly see the nozzles of the OMS are smaller than the big, obviously, the nozzles of the main engines, and that's very understandable there. So we have to find something that sort of matches the scale there. Now we've got many options here. Obviously, the cheetah was attempting one to start with because we can turn that off. But that engine bell is even bigger than the main engine one. So that's not going to work. So at the end of the day, I decided to settle on the old friends, the swivel engines, because their engine bells look more or less like we want it to be. Of course, they have the problem of having this little side pipe there. That's one of those things again. Other options. Let's just have a look. Are there other options? Of course, we can't use the Reliance because they can't gimbal. That's the one thing we need. We can't use the Bobcats because they're doubles. We're not using the Puffs. The Puffs are way too small anyway. The skiffs are way too massive, and from that point on, they get even more massive -er. It's not a word, but we can pretend. So, at the end of the day, I think this is the best compromise. Now, of course, putting it in two times symmetry means we can't hide those outer... I don't know, does this, like, sort of eject some of the pressure from the combustion chamber. I'm not sure. This is obviously not a closed combustion system here. But we can't hide the uh, this little nozzle. Because now if we rotate this thing, of course the opposite thing happens on the other side. So somewhere it's still going to point. It's still going to stick out. So let's just undo that. Uh, of course, the next thing is we want to move them in as far as possible, pretty much where the engine bell starts. But of course, there's too many things here right now. We don't want the nozzle clipping there like that. We do want it closed off. We could even go that far where the orange part starts. Now, of course, we have these pipes on the side. That's the one drawback of using this engine. Uh, not sure, not sure. But you see, it does give us a very decent thrust-to-weight ratio of 0 0.5 with this extra tank. So, at least you don't have to wait half an hour to make your uh, burns there. The other thing is to use these, maybe. Hmm. That could actually work, maybe. Let's play around with this. Of course, we're going to bury the whole body into this thing. Now, this is just a pure test here. The problem is it has this sort of indented shape there. Let's bury that and then see. Actually, that can work. That can work. That's not bad. What's the thrust uh, here? So in a vacuum, we have a 120 kilonewtons, whereas the swivel was 215. So it's not quite as powerful. I'm just thinking if I look at the image again, those nozzles or engine bells look too small now. How can I compare it? Let's compare it to the back of the uh, tail fin. So if I take that width there and I look there, the nozzle is about... Hmm, the width of the tail is about two-thirds that of the OMS nozzles. Hmm, rough guesses again. So would that actually work? Let's put a nozzle here and actually do a test.
Hmm. That's too small. You can see that's that width of the tail is more than two thirds of the engine nozzle thing. No, throw these away. Let's go back to the ones that we had. Not perfect, I know. But if I just position it like that. That's actually a bit too big now. Hmm. Let's put it where the edge is. That's about only halfway. Uh, well, it's it's there's no perfect solution here. It's either too big or it's too small. What if we use that? Those nozzles don't look right. Actually, it might be better to use the thuds because their vectoring range is 8 degrees versus only 3. Mm. Let me go back to the images again. What's the length of the nozzles? So here is the Enterprise landing again. So if I look at the length of the OMS engine bell, and the big one, it's about three quarters the length. Which that one is not. That's too short. That's not even half. Although again, these were mock-up engines. The Enterprise obviously never flew. Okay, there's uh, the Atlantis on the launch pad. Yes, these things are definitely too small that we have. Okay, they're at least half of the engine. Mm, maybe it can work. Maybe it can work. Hmm. Let's just put two on again. And move that in. Of course, the fact that we have to move this whole thing in to hide the Housing is a big problem because we're burying much of the nozzle there. So that's not going to work. Ish. Ish. We're just getting some kind of a boilerplate again. Uh, they could work, uh, of course, bearing in mind that we can't make this perfect. Of course, they are still firing too high here. They're missing the center of mass, although getting the exact center of mass is never going to be possible. Specifically, once we detach the payload, it's going to be way to the back there. And of course, the further back it is, the more difficult it is for the Ohm's engines, because they're going to have to be slanted like this. So in that case, we need to roll this whole thing more. How would we do this now? So it has to go out. And it has to go up. Thusly. Then, of course, we have to move the whole thing again. Let's just play around with that. It's a little off. That's pretty close. Still way too high. Of course, in this case, I don't want to toy with this stuff more because... At the end of the day, to point directly to that center of mass, the whole thing is going to be at such an angle, it's very difficult. In that case, we just angle the engines. Now, of course, we have a problem with these adapters now. No, I don't want to reroute anything. Are you mad? This is why it's better to move the strut there, not the whole structure on the back. Oh, that's a disaster. Hmm. Well, building a space shuttle in real life was incredibly difficult, so we can imagine it's going to be a uh, bit of a struggle for us as well. Ok, 
Okay, not quite. Hmm. That'll do for now. Though I don't like to leave things for later. This is not good. This is not good. I want it exact. That's bad. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna have to start over, comrades. Take the octagonal thing. Put it down there. Space... Uh, take this. Space bar that. And then take this and space bar that. And now we don't have two. Because it's not in the correct symmetry mode. Alright, let's start again. Only moving the strut, nothing else. Not snapping, of course. I think it might need to roll a bit more. Now it's clipping in at the top again. Every time you move it, of course, it has a, a, a tendency to change other things. Hmm, okay, that's something. So it's not going to fit perfectly flush here at the back. Again, some of the limitations we have to deal with. That works quite well. Hmm. Bit more forward. Kinda ish. Let's just see what we can do with the engine. We're closer now, certainly. However, the actual Nozzles must also be rotated. Now to do this is going to expose the base of the housing again. I guarantee it. Yep, of course. These are not good engines. Not for this purpose. No. Dump them. We're going back to the originals. Just practicality. I know these don't look great with this pipe sticking out of the side, but that's where the Kerbal equivalence comes in. This gives us much more freedom, and that looks much better in terms of size as well. Now, if we look at the torque right now, it is 328 kilonewtons, so kilonewton meters. So we want to roll this thing. Now, Watch it come down. 170, 140. However, we still have to move this back to the center now. F. 80. That's much better. So we want to make sure that we can offset this with the reaction wheels that we have. So how many, uh, how much does this have? Talk of... Okay, the yaw, the roll is less. We don't care about the roll. So that's 40 and then 5 on the back. That's not enough to offset that. So it has to be more precise. That's why we need the other reaction wheel. It's going to roll if we don't do that. Unless we burn the RCS the whole time to keep it stable. This gives us another 30. So that at least gets us close. Because the thing here now is, we still have to remember we are going to have a tank or something attached when we want to do our orbital insertion burn. That, of course, shifts the center of mass back the other way. So it's a balance. There's no perfect thing here. So you have to decide. Do you want it better on the initial burn or on the return burn? So now it's 124... And if we take this away, it's 169 again. So, uh, finding a balance is the best solution to that.
in this case, I think let's just move it to, so it's less for the empty burn here. And of course, then the tank is also going to empty as it burns, and that will shift the center of mass forward or back? Forward, and then it gets more in line with it. Yes, okay, so we, we are happy generally with that. I know it has the pipes. That's one of those things. So, with that said, let's just move the caps on again. No, 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 don't want to roll that thing. F again. I want this perfect, perfectly. Perfection. Like the Borg, I strive for perfection. Well, Kerbal perfection. So with that done, I think we're looking quite good there on the back. That does look the part. Definitely, definitely. I think though, I have this nasty tendency of messing things up when I just think they're good. So, strut again. If I just look at this, it looks like it's sticking out too far. More like that. Definitely. Definitely. Now it also sits more flush there on the bottom. So with that done, what did that change, if anything? Hmm. Now we have to roll it again. F. Now that line on the back is not straight, so it's never going to fit perfectly, but that is as good as I can make it. There. Voila. Now I'm much happier with that. So I'm going to save this. Oh, good grief. If the power goes off now, I lose everything. So this will be the tutorial. I know this is not a technical or like a traditional tutorial, but because I go through everything in detail, I still think it qualifies. So, uh, tutorial, uh, let's say STS shuttle, making history expansion, because we are using parts from the expansion to make this thing work, especially the big 5 meter tanks, they are the best in terms of scale for this project. So now we're decently happy with the back here, and if we again look at the image of the back, and I flick back to KSP, then that kind of looks very nice here. I know, again, it, it's around and all of that. Yeah. The only other way we could get a get around, haha, that is to move the thing in, but then we're going to have this ridge sticking out here. You see like that? That is not going to work. No way. So we're going to have to deal with this. It's just part of life. Of course, it will be obfuscated slightly by the fact that we still have to add the RCS packs on the back. So that will make it look less round here. So that's one thing. Hmm. No. There's nothing else I could use on the back here. I was thinking another possibility is a... Heat shield with no ablator, they should be black. And that's much more rounded. Hmm, I'm not sure. That's what I tend to use for the Buran to get that circular back part. But this is okay. So now let's get this thing back uh, on the back going. So that has to fit, if I look at a side view again, the RCS pack is basically on the bottom of that structure. So right there. So for this, I think the best option is the Oscar Bs. Just because they're also grey, so they kind of fit in here. And we it's round, so it sort of fits with the edge of that tank. And of course it's small, so I don't want to use one of those struts, because this real thing was a solid structure. So if we just look at it kind of like that, however I make the additional change of flattening the thing out. But is that... It is better, because the line of RCS thrusters that face towards the sides are perfectly straight in line with the body of the shuttle. And getting that right is very much impossible unless we make the structure also like that. Or is it? Hmm... 
Although I kind of like this better, where it's angled as, you know, in line with the thing here and not flattened out. That means we'll have to put the RCS ports on another thing and then clip that into this. Like that. So, if I look at the length from the side again, it's not quite as long as the main engines, but it's getting there. Okay, this is a good top-down picture. The Ohm's nozzles are just longer than the RCS structure there. So, if I look at that, this is not right. It has to be like this then. Oof, what did I do? What did I do? Okay, no, it's the payload. It'll have to be like that. Is that long enough, though? Well, it's just longer, so if I move this out like that, there we go. That's more like it. Then I want to get this thing. Well, it is pretty much on the very edge there, so I think that's how it will have to stay. Now the issue is, what are we going to attach the RCS ports to? I think it's going to have to be one of those I-beams, maybe? Yes, probably. So to start off with, let's put the thing just on a direct straight line there. And then start putting the things on. So this is actually something I didn't do for the demonstration version, but this is better. So just one time symmetry snapping. We want four of them spaced out roughly equally, but in a way that's not longer than that structure. So it might have to move a little. Let's get it to the very edge here. Something like that. Hmm. Well, let's just do a, a test with that. So now, of course, we have to do the same on the top. However, we only use three there. Now that's going to be a problem. Is that good? That's not going to work, is it? <sighs> Because we have to do the same on the bottom as well. Mm. Well, before judging, let's do a test. But this will just be three ports. And of course, three on the bottom. However, the other thing is now, the real thing is not flat like that. It points out at a 45-ish degree angle. So it shouldn't be like that, it should be like that. With wider spacing. Yeah, this For this build, comrades, you've got to have stamina. That's why most YouTubers don't do it. Or not to this extent. But you know me, I will not... Oh, good grief. What was I just saying? I will not sh be shy for a challenge. This is going to be the best damn shuttle that's ever been built in KSP. <laughs> uh, well, one can dream, right? Of course, you do get mods that give you like actual shuttles that look like the real thing. But it's better when we build it ourselves. And it's pure stock parts. So anyone can join in on the fun. That's what I always do. Okay, that thing must not clip. Now there is a problem. The nozzle there is clipping, but it's a choice between that or the other nozzle clipping. Unless we move it down a bit. Oof. We can do an hour-long episode just on this, comrades. Hmm. So what's happening in the news? Let's think about it. Is there anything we can talk about also while we're building? It's difficult to say. Uh, ish. Comrades, 
concentrating so much I can't even speak. Okay, that's decent-ish. That, that'll be our first test. So now we take this whole thing and uh, move it up here. Of course, uh, zoom out. I still want it to be like this, not like that. So it has to be there. And then move it up. And then out. You see what I was getting at, comrades? Because that is in a straight line like this, not on an angle. Hmm. Not sure if we're going to be able to do this properly. It's very tough, very tough. Let's, let's just try, let's just try. This might be a dead end, comrades. Yes, maybe. Because now we've got the thing sticking out on the bottom there. Perfectionism is such a disease. Hmm. Oh well, at least the nozzles are in a straight line. It's because the whole thing is angled there. It makes it a bit tough. I will be okay with having these white edges show. Even if they're asymmetric, as long as the nozzles are perfectly symmetrical. That's the main thing. Again, it's this issue of just making a, a trade-off, you know. Now I need to get in there somehow. Yay, yay, yay. I'm wondering if I can finish this episode in one sitting now. I'm doubting it. want them out so I can see them. And this is just the one side. Oh no! So we're going to have to do it all over again. Is that all of them? I think so. It's three anyway. So this one up as well. You see, it's not on a Direct 45 degree angle, given that the tanks are angled themselves. But I kind of like this, it adds another layer of complexity to the thing. There you are. No, 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 no. You. Okay, let's toy around with this. Uh, why is that one? <coughs> hmm, it's difficult to get the right viewing angle here. It's also because the tank juts out here. So the further away you get, the more it's going to be embedded. Yep, I'm officially losing my voice. But that kind of does work. Otherwise we just have to attach it to the thing itself. That's why it was easier to make the tanks straight. And then just throw the things on. Oh, well. I'm not happy with this. Get rid of it. What happens if we just throw these on here? Of course we have to use snapping. Even that tank is not properly rolled there. Uh, I think I'm going to take another break, comrades. This is a heck of a job here. Save. Comrades, it's a day later. Uh, I had to take a break there. 
you know, after two hours it gets a bit much. But today is a fresh new day and I am very ready to continue our build. However, I must add the caveat that you can probably hear my voice is a little messed up today. And I can't figure out why I don't feel sick or anything, but uh, things are just not working right here. So I'm sure it has something to do with the cold. It's quite a cold day today, uh, 18 degrees. Now, of course, in America, that would be about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm sure for many people that's not cold, but for me, that's cold. That's uh, coming from a South African anyway. Let's continue here. So, uh, yes, just bear that in mind, comrades, and forgive my voice. Now, I was thinking about this problem here. I think we do need to make this a bit longer, though. Let's just sort this out. So I'm just going to take it nice and slow today. Uh, okay, yes, roughly, roughly. Now, the thing is here, I still want to keep the idea that I had in the last episode. Let me just turn the sound down a little bit here. So... This is angled in line with this section here. Now, I like this, but we want the RCS thrusters to be more level than this. So how on earth are we going to do that? First of all, of course, I just want to figure out this thing. I think that's where I left off. We have to start over with this. Just because they don't line up properly. There we go. Of course, we have to make sure they're empty. I just want all the lines to be nice and even there. And then we just make sure that the thing fits on here again. Now, obviously, the snapping has to be off. Somewhere there. That looks right. Yes, I think so. Now, the question, of course, is... How are we going to achieve this this business here? We have to have another structure to do this. I'm thinking the bottom part we can do directly onto this, this structure here. And I was looking again at the images. I've got them open here in the background again. The bottom three RCS ports are angled. So I think those can just go directly onto the tank. And they are at a 45 degree angle as well so let's just turn the camera a little bit so there i guess is about 45 so that would be wait a minute that's the 90 that's the other 90 so there's the 45 okay so we just want three of them and of course now we still have to work on the spacing and all of that but that's fine. Let's just turn off the snapping here. F. And of course, this thing has a very wide base, so I can't move it too far to the edge there. Otherwise, it's going to stick out. Now, for this, I do want a little bit of the white showing. I think it just looks a bit better like that. Otherwise, we bury the whole nozzle and we get the clipping there again of the nozzle itself, which I don't want. So I think that's a good balance. Let's just see. The spacing looks decent, and I think that'll do. That'll do for these thrusters. So at least we've got something in place. If I just have a look at the, the real thing again. That is angled, but maybe not 45 degrees. <sighs> oh, bother. But let's move it. Let's move it, comrades. It's a little bit more down than that. I would say like that. It'll be more efficient like this anyway, because these will push the craft upwards if we do the translation. So now we can actually make it fit inside those square shapes there on the tank very nicely. Yes, maybe this one can... Uh oh sticking out there. Uh, just a bit further, and that'll do, comrades. I think also while we're doing this, we should meddle a bit with the actuation toggles. I don't want these going off unless we are going upwards or we are rolling. I think they can also work for rolling as well. So, fore and aft, 
I turn that off. This is not going to help. And I don't want it pushing us because it's angled there. Dorsal ventral. So that's up and down. So we want that one on. Port and starboard. We turn that off. The roll we leave on. The pitch we leave on. And the yaw. I'm not sure. I think we turn the yaw off. That's what we'll use for the, the forward thrusters. So I think that'll work well. Now of course we have to do that for each one. So only the yaw and the port and the fore aft will be on. So roll. Oh dear, I've forgotten already. You see, today is not my day. Roll should also be on. Yes. So no, yaw, port, and fore aft are off. That's that's right. Yaw, port, and fore aft. There we go. Yaw, port, and fore aft. Okay. So now we're back back where we need to be. So that looks very nice. I like this. The question now is what to do about the top part. There looks like there is a sort of a segment running right through that tank. Now that's very difficult to explain. Let me just go back to this thing again. Yes. So we're going to need something very thin here that will be something that we used to attach the RCS thrusters on. The question is just what? Can this structural panel work? It's a little too wide. I don't want it sticking out of this thing. Mm -mm. No, it's pretty much flush with the shape here. So that is, it's got the, the width right, but it's too, too wide there. It sticks out of the tank. What about one of these? Oh, I think... Oh dear. That won't work either. Let's just roll this thing a little. Let's just play around with this. Just want to experiment a little. Now, if I move this backwards... It's not quite right. It looks like that almost, and then the two forward thrusters sit on top of that. So that would be a nice look there. But of course, I'm not adding it if I can't put the other thrusters on it as well. Otherwise, it's just unnecessary. Now, this thing is very narrow. Can I not get something else that is equally narrow? That is... Could this work, actually? Let's just test this. Mm, just a, a rough test. Oh dear, no, 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 no. No, that's definitely not going to work. Okay, it might just be necessary to go back to the I-beam again. But not for the top. We'll use a separate one for the side ones. So, is that going to be good for the... No... We're still going to need that triangle part to stick out of the back there, I think. Anyway, let's use that and then just put the four of them in a row, like we did before, you know. I think that worked. The problem was I was putting the others on it as well, and that complicated the thing too much. Now, that's probably too long. Let's make them a bit narrower here, oh, snapping off, and just roughly get them, all our ducks in a row. Okay, that should work. Now let's duplicate this again, X, and then the question still becomes, how are we going to get this in there? I think it'll just have to be the move tool, the offset thing. Let's try it. Uh, 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 no snapping, please. It's got promise, but the, the way that the tank is angled means some of it is going to stick out there. That is a pity, though. This is the thing we sat with yesterday. Well, for you, literally just a few seconds ago. What if we move them just to the very edge there? Don't want the actual uh, thing itself sticking out there. Okay. 
Uh, yes, we have the same problem. Same problem. Unless we move them out a bit more. I suppose we could also argue this round shape here protects the nozzles from the heat of re-entry. So that's why if they're tucked just behind it, it's actually a good thing. But uh, let's not worry too much about that. Let's just get them a little bit more out. And then, okay, just like that. Now, let's try messing around with the I-beam again. Hmm. It almost would look better to have the part of the I-beam stick out, but now it's sticking out here as well. That's not going to work, so the thing has to be buried quite deeply there. Let's just take it as far as it can go. Okay, it will have to do, comrades. Maybe if we make it like this, it will be better. Uh oh can't see them now. So that more of the base there is showing. It's a lot of thought that has to go into this kind of a craft. Good grief. But this is very much up my alley again. Now, let's just see. Of course, it's still not going to be exactly even. Hmm. Well, that's one of those things. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'll be happy with this. At least... It doesn't look as terrible as when we just have these little bits of white showing. Like these I love because they're all even, you know. They all show the same amount of the, the white ring there. Now in this case, of course, the more we get to the front, more of the base is showing. But that's just how it is. That's just how it is. I, I can live with this, comrades. I think that still meets our requirements of having this tank be angled, but having the thrusters not be angled. Alright, so let's start changing the actuation toggles. So what do we need them to do? In this case, the yaw has to be active, the pitch is off, the roll is off, port and starboard is on, fore and aft is off, dorsal and ventral is off. So all that we want here is port, starboard and yaw. So yaw, uh, port, starboard, yaw, port, starboard, and finally yaw and port, starboard. Okay, that's one more step, comrades. It's something, you know. Let's get that triangle piece back. I think it will work best here. So in this case, of course, it might just be easier to use the move tool again. If it will go far enough. Details, comrades. Details maketh life. Now, I won't. I don't want this to stick out too far. It must just create this sense that there is something, you know, this sort of division happening there. Now, if I go back to the real thing again, that piece there is flat. It's not angled like the tank is angled upward. So that is correct. Now, let's just make this gray. It will look a bit better. Yes, yes, that will work, comrades. Obviously, it's not exact, but... It's the best we can do at the moment. So, let's take these two ports, and they are angled like the tank. Yes, they are. So, obviously, this makes sense, because then they will also fire more through the center of mass. Not exact, but more in line with it. Let me just get them nice and even here. So, I think like that. Hmm, yes. So let's move them in a bit, though. We could get away with just having the port there, but I think it will fit more the theme if we have a little bit of the white showing there. Okay, so these are our forward thrusters. So in this case, we don't want the yaw 
turn that off. We don't want the pitch, we don't want the roll, we don't roll, we don't want the port starboard or the dorsal ventral. So I have to turn everything off except the four aft option there. Okay. So that's one more thing, comrades. Let's save this sucker before the power switches off or something. You never know. Now, what is the next step? We need the upper ones. I just need to see them. Hmm. Now, this is not the best image. Now, the upper ones are also flat there. There's three of them again. So, we want to do the same kind of a thing that we did with these middle ones. But how to do that without messing the whole thing up now? That's a question. I'm not sure. Maybe we can attach it to that I-beam as well. So let's try. Let's try it. Oh dear. This is going to be a bit of a struggle here. Oh, there's so much happening in here. But, okay, there's number one. And let's actually mess with this. No, it's not going to work now. Oh, oh. Let's just get this stuff placed first. Micro-engineering. Okay. Oh, oh, is that inside the thing? Yes, it is. So, to mess with this now... Hmm. Okay, we'll just have to move it. It's not centered here. That's the other problem. But it can't be because we have this thing poking out there. I know it sounds suggestive, comrades, but you know what I mean. What if we try and roll this... Now I want the snapping on, and I know again it's going to do the opposite thing on the other side, but at least like this it's out of the way of the upward thrusters there. In this case I want them directly in the middle, so they'll be firing right next to this nozzle. So in this case, let's turn off the F again, so absolute offset, and oh no, it's not going to work, it doesn't want to play along. Might be because the snapping was on again. There's so much happening in here. Yes, snapping is the culprit. So I think we could get away with it. Of course, we're going to have the same problem again of getting them in a row there. But that's a start. Now, how am I going to see the rest here? Well, there's the other one. Mm, okay, let's just get them there first. Then we'll worry about getting the, our ducks in a row. Uh, could I just pick it up here? No? Yes, maybe? Yes. Now... I don't know, this zoom in when I change the camera is a bit of a problem. Alright, now obviously I don't want this thing poking out of the back like that, so we have to move it forward a little bit like that. So now that's the absolute limit there. Now, to get this again in line, it's a bit of a guess there. Okay, at least they're in the middle now. Now we need to get them to be on an, on an even level here. An equal playing field, as they say. Now, to do that, it's going to poke out more and more and more on the top, but I am okay with that, because that creates a straight line there, just like the real thing had. Yes, I know this sort of... It's a bit awkward with a, r a round shape there on the top, but if I go back to the real thing, it looks like there's a little plate on the top there that it attaches to. Of course, this is not just a round tank that they use here. It's a, it's a, well, it's an unorthodox shape, but I can't recreate that. So I think like this, we, we meet the sort of the, the, again, the compromise, you know, just getting them more or less in line. And that will do, that will do. 
I think so. At the end of the day, we also have to move on. But I'm happy with this. This is not something I feel unhappy with. So in this case, what do we have to do? The yaw is off. The pitch will be on. The roll will be on, I think, yes. Port starboard will be off. Dorsal ventral will be on. And fore aft will be off. So uh, I'm going to have to focus now. Pitch roll and dorsal ventral on. Pitch roll and dorsal ventral. Pitch roll, dorsal ventral. Okay, I think that will do for the aft, comrades. We are getting somewhere now. So, the aft of the shuttle is in a relatively decent state now. We, especially if we look at it far away, that looks like a really nice shape there. We can see it does follow the, the lines of the real thing. Mm, I'm very happy with that. The one thing I'm still not sure about is the, the angle of the wings here. I don't think we should do that. The, the thing that creates the angle is if you look at it from the bottom again, where the shape is molded so nicely, but the top of the wings I don't think are angled. Not to this extent anyway. So let's undo that. Snapping off and just get it to the very bottom. And spacebar to reset and do the same for this. Okay, I think that'll do. So, of course, they still show through there. Hmm, that's the compromise thing again. Now we just have to fix the wheels. I also think the wheels, I'm not sure if they will survive impact. They ought to, but... Uh, it does look more like the real thing. The real thing didn't have these long legs that it landed on. So, okay, I think that'll do. Now we have to move to the front, comrades. So now we begin with the second heavy task. Now, to do this, let's have a think about this. If I go to the image, I'm going to search Space Shuttle Nose. Very, very nice images here. So, we can very clearly see there are three thrusters firing directly forward and they sit in sort of this area. It has the same thing on the real thing where it has the shape that goes in there and they sit right here on the front. So, we're going to do the same thing. Of course, now the issue is it's going to poke out a lot. I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Now, actually... Hmm, this will be again a bit of guesswork. But let's just get the thing in place. So, hmm. You know the good thing about this whole shuttle is when we build the Buran, it's going to be so easy because it looks so similar. So we can uh, just adapt the shuttle a little bit. So all this work is certainly worth it, comrades. Now, in this case, there is nothing I can do about this shape bulging out there. Again, that sounds awfully suggestive, but uh, unavoidable, I suppose. Let's just move this up because the nozzle is clipping into the hole there, and I don't want that. Now, we do want our ducks back in a row again, but other than that, I think that's it. I mean, there's not much more I can do here. I can't bury the thing and then have only part of the nozzle show. So this is it, comrades. This is much easier. In this case, we want it not to yaw. We do not... Do we want it to pitch? No. We want... No, no roll. Roll. Port starboard, no. Dorsal ventral, no. It's purely fore and aft. This will push the craft backwards if we need to translate to dock. So, very, very useful. Okay, that's already fixed. So, the next step, right behind that, there are three more nozzles that point upward, comrades. Let's just go back to this. There's also this ring shape that goes around, and then we have the three just in front of that. So, what I mean now is this ring shape that goes around here. So, the three upward ones are right in there. Now, they are in line with the ones on the bottom... Although it's going to be inside this line, but the real thing doesn't have these two vertical lines there. Maybe we'll have to move them a bit closer to each other. 
Not sure about that. The only thing with this is I know they're not in line when we look at it from this angle. They would be like that, but then they stick out really ridiculously. So I'll rather have them sort of fit around the mold of the hull there, like that. So that just works a bit better for us. Now on the top, of course, I shouldn't recreate that one. I need a fresh one because we don't want this to be only fore and aft. So here we need it to go directly upwards. Again, this is where I said earlier, the real thing shows more, it, it, it goes a bit more forward, you know. But in this case, if we do that, when we move downwards, the craft is also going to slide backwards, which is not what we want. It's just going to make our lives easier, you know. So in this case, I sound like a 70-year-old smoker today. Hmm. That's how it goes, I guess, even though I'm not a smoker and I've never been one. All right, let's see. Uh, just move them in line. That one is angled a little bit there. I'm still not happy that they're crossing these lines here. I want them to be inside those lines. But then we have to do the same for the ones on the front. Hmm. Let's just get our ducks in a row again. Same thing, I'll have them angled, or, you know, on the shape of the hull, so these outer ones will sit lower than the middle one. I hope all this babbling is making sense to people. Okay. Again, if I bury it deeper, the nozzles are going to clip into the hull, which I definitely don't want. That breaks the whole immersion, in my view. So now they're pointing up. I just want that middle one pointing a little bit more up, which is another very suggestive thing I'm saying today. I don't know what's happening today, but there we are. Hmm, okay, that'll do. Let's just move these ones in a bit. I want them in line with one another. Almost there. I think that will do. Yes. Okay, so we're somewhere, comrades. We're somewhere. Now, of course, in this case, we only want this to your... So, no, wait. Not your pitch. No roll. No... Oh, do we want this to roll? Actually, we might want this to roll. It's not going to be an effective roll, but it could work. Port and starboard off, dorsal, ventral on, fore, aft, off. So the only things that must be on, we don't want your, no. So what must be on is pitch roll and dorsal, ventral. Okay, so that's one more step, save again. You never know when the electricity goes off. Or lightning strikes, or who knows what. So the next step is the thrusters on the side. Now there we can see is a very tiny one. Now, I can't make one that's smaller than the other, so we'll ignore that one. So we need four more. Two are just inside that ring again, pointing to the side. So the ring again being this line here. So I would say in line with those things. So in this case, uh, I just need to go down a bit. So they would be somewhere in this neighborhood here. I think it's easier to turn the snapping off. So in this case, I also want them pointing directly to the side. Again, just to make our lives easier. So let's play around with this. Move it out a little bit. Uh, again, some of it is going to show there. Nothing I can do. I just need the nozzles not to clip there. It's actually not bad. Not bad at all. But now, oh, good grief. I only put it on the one side. That happens a lot, surprisingly. I think, oh, everything is nice. And then, whoop, not on the other side. Hmm. 
Okay, move it back out again. Now, these are going to be our yaw thrusters and our uh, sport and starboard movement. So I think, I know again it has this round half moon base sticking out, but we can argue somehow that that helps to protect it against the re-entry heat or something. Just, you know, always have to make a compromise somewhere. It's a good life lesson, I suppose. Hmm. Let's see if I bring them out more. Is that going to look a bit nicer, actually? Yes, maybe. Okay, comrades, that will have to do. Let's just make sure they're roughly pointing in the same direction. It seems this one is having a bit of trouble. Great. Okay, now it's sticking out too far that way again. Alright, that'll do. So, save. Now we need the two thrusters that point down. Now, obviously, that's a big challenge for us, because for them, they make the nozzle again inside the structure of the craft itself. For us, we can't do that. So, obviously, I could clip all of this stuff just inside the craft. We won't see it, but that's just ridiculous. I won't do that. So, they are in line with the bottom one. So the bottom one being this one, so right here. So we need two of them that will point down for us. Just have to find the right one there. Okay, now of course, problem time again. Uh, the whole thing is buried. I do want them angled a little bit though. We can make it like that. This will also help for the roll, I think. Now, in this case, again, they conform to the body of the craft, so they won't... They'll sort of sink inward as they come to the front. Yes, that'll do. Now we move them out. F. And maybe a bit more. Like thusly, comrades, thusly. Again, compromise and all of that. Maybe I'll make them move up a little bit. Okay, so these ones are going to do the following. They will... Your, what's your again? Your is side to side. No, we don't want this yawing. Those other ones your. So your is off. Pitch is definitely on. Roll is definitely on. Port starboard is off. Dorsal ventral is on. And fore and aft is off. So pitch roll and dorsal ventral. That's all we want. Okay, save again. So we're done, comrades, with the RCS system. That's it. We don't want anything on the bottom of the craft. That's obviously going to burn up. In Kerbal it doesn't matter, but we try to, to do the right thing anyway. I see this thing here on, on... I'm looking at the picture of Discovery now on the side. And it says their rescue out here for emergency rescue. Very much like this thing here. Cut here for emergency rescue. Is that not what the other one says? Cut here, that's right, not out here. So it's, again, I like that they try to recreate those details. Now, comrades, are we going to put ladders on this thing? I think so, you know. At the end of the day, if we land somewhere and we want our kerbals to egress, uh, then we want ladders. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to get back in. Now, in this case... Okay, now I'm getting all messed up here. It's a choice again. I'm thinking this one is not going to work, the Keyless Mobility Enhancer, because it might be a bit too short. Yes, that's not reaching all the way, you know. Nope, that won't do. It'll have to be the other one. So, in this case, we definitely want it to be on both sides, and no snapping, otherwise it's going to angle weirdly. And it definitely shouldn't point upwards. 
that is what we call a suboptimal outcome and that will do yes even again so we make them on both sides we retract strange the other one doesn't also retract hmm. and we just want the outer cap showing which is pretty much what's happening here now this is on a part of the cockpit that's actually bending so that's why the this part sticks out more than the other part we might try and roll it a little bit just to make the bend even and then move it in a little bit so that just the outer cap shows there we go save again happy with that so what is next comrades what is next for this uh, great task here the next thing I was also thinking over the the course of the last day about this I think we should have a probe core in here because again at the end of the day comrades it's about the practicality of it having a shuttle now that we can test without having crew inside is actually a good thing although again we don't technically need it but uh, anyway I think one thing we do need there was another reaction wheel uh, that's another thing I was not gonna do but I think it is better to do it now in this case it's difficult to attach something here because it disappears the inside wall there but an easy way around that is to attach it here and then just move it in so to do that of course we do our usual thing that gives us our guideline and then the more we get to the center the less the snapping works so it's a bit of a guess there and then of course we use the rotate tool with the snapping on and then we flip the thing over and then we use the move tool with the snapping off and we move it in voila it's gone nobody knows the better you know now we use the big reaction wheel at the end of the day practicality must be our overriding concern so there we are comrades that will that will help offset the torque difference and all of that I think at the end of the day again that will make it much easier for just everyday gameplay you know you can always take it out if you want so let's save that I think for the bulk of the orbiter we are now finished of course we can put on another antenna if you like but the stock sort of inbuilt antenna is enough to reach the ground we can put on radiator panels and all of that I think we might need to do that let's go to thermal now that will be nice big panels but we can't put them on the open or the the movable parts of the cargo bay so we have to put them on the inside unfortunately but that gives us another reason to open the cargo bay when we are in space so we double this we do not snap I think no and then we just put it flat like that I think that works Hmm, how are we going to do this without sort of this line here? Maybe that's okay. Otherwise, we'll just have segments in the middle, maybe. Or we could flip it over. And put those parts, yes, at the top. Ah, it's a process of discovery, comrades. So we'll do the same here. Uh, 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 no, no, no. Don't want that showing. Like that. Alt and click to duplicate. And we'll do this all along the inner wall. I think so. Why not? Detail work again. good that does add a little bit of texture to the inside I'm obviously not too happy about the wings clipping through there but if I move them out then it looks like they're semi detached from the craft uh, maybe we could hide this somehow what if we do this again but then angle this hmm Possibly? What if I... 
Move them around. Good grief, my sense of orientation is all messed up today. Either way, this these three little clips are going to show somewhere. So I think let's put them on the top. Then it at least looks like it's attached to the top one there. Now the only thing now is this mustn't stick out on the back now, on the other side of the wall. Mm, then it can look like those wing parts that are clipping through are actually just part of what's holding this thing together. Not super elegant, I know. Mm. That's something we can toy around with more when, when we have the payload. I think that will help us. Nothing is sticking out on the back here, so I think it works for now. Let's just throw in a tank here and see what the thing will look like. Still very much clearance from the side there, so not a problem. We could use smaller radiators to cover that up. Maybe that would be better. Oh well, for now, let's leave that. Put that away, close the cargo bay and save. I want to do a flight test. I want to see if this thing is even remotely workable. First thing though, the tail must only yaw. No pitch and no roll. And I think it's 100% okay, probably. I do not want the big elephants to do the roll either. So yaw is off, roll is off, only pitch, because the roll is always overpowered. In this case, I will put on the roll, put off the yaw, but I'm going to make its authority limit uh, less. That might be a bad idea in terms of the pitch, but when the thing rolls, it's kind of out of control. Even a slight roll will throw the craft over. Let's just see if this thing still looks okay. Oof, that's a problem. That is a major problem, a major malfunction, and of course we have to face the possibility that we will be landing the craft with full fuel as well, if there's an abort situation. I just want to go back to the uh, thing and make sure that, uh, okay, it's fine. Just wanted to see that I really am recording right now. Totally out of sorts today. But I can still build a shuttle, so let's see, if I roll this, it will help a little bit, you see? I think that might work, it's still super close, but, uh oh, the other one needs to move as well, of course. Oof, now it's really pointing backwards. Okay, well, we that's why we test, comrades. So, in this case, I am going to throw on two temporary jet engines. Now we do have liquid fuel in here so I don't need to put any more on. Let's just put on these pre-coolers. I don't want this to change the center of mass too much because that's the point of the test. Oh well, don't care how it looks right now. Don't care. Just want to do a test. Uh, Panthers, uh, is that necessary? Uh, sure, why not? It doesn't change the center of mass, so... And that's because there's only one of them. Slightly, but in terms of where the center of lift is, it's all the same. So where is this now? I just want to use that and then test it. So save one last time and let's go onto the launch pad or runway and see what this thing can do. And we have a major malfunction. Clearly the wheels need to go back a bit further. But okay, let's leave that for now actually. Want to see what happens. Let's kick the thing off. Wow, okay. That center of mass is not good. <laughs> Imagine seeing this in real life. That would not be good. Okay, revert. I'll fix this and meet you here again. Actually, no, I won't meet you there again because I want you to see everything that I do here. So I won't skip anything. So in this case, you can see where the problem was. The center of mass is way, way, way too close to the wheels. So we'll just move them back a little bit here. Like that. That should do. So, back to the runway. Definitely better, comrades. We are at least not falling over. So, 
I think let's do this test. So in this case we are simulating or going to simulate a landing with a full fuel tank. So SAS on and let's just see if this thing will fly. Uh, it might take a little while. These engines are underpowered. I might give them some help. Oh, 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 doing that was a bad idea. There goes a billion dollars. All right, time for better engines. Okay, comrades, I just threw on the whiplash engines. Now in this case I did that off camera because this will not make it into the final craft. So let's do this. Oh, nope, not what I want. Turn this off. Shut down. Shut down. Staging was a problem. Now that's already activated. So <clears throat> now that's already activated. So we'll put that in the second stage and try again. She's a big beast, I admit. But I think we should get off the ground. I just need to know how it performs. That's all. Okay, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, and it flips horrendously. Another billion dollars in its... In its... I don't know, that doesn't really translate into English. Let's do this again. Uh, what do we need to change? The center of lift is wrong. It pulls the craft backwards. Let's go back to the hangar. Now, what was the problem there? The problem is the center of lift. Now, in actual fact, what happens is the nose flips over. It's too close there. We need to do something else. Let's try playing with the strikes. There's one point where it pushes it a little bit back like that. So that's one thing. The other thing would be to play with the wings. Let's undo that. And just try playing with the wings. No, no outcome is satisfactory. Undo. So how do we deal with this problem? How do we deal with this problem? Let's try playing with the back section again. There's something. I know the center of lift is angled, but I just need it to be further back from the center of mass. Now that's going to look rather weird. That's going to look rather weird. But let's just see if it works. That's my main concern. I just want to know what, whether this thing can fly. Okay, so try again. Let's see what the outcome is this time. So at what speed does it take off? Let's monitor this thing. In the 60s. Mm, I'm wondering. Those wings have now messed things up. That's a problem. It's not getting off the ground. Okay, I don't care about the takeoff because it doesn't matter. We didn't, we'll never take off like this. I just want to know at what speed we need to land. Okay, so again, same problem. Horrible, horrible, horrible. This is not an easy problem to solve. Let's be real. It pulls the whole thing forward and we can understand why it's because of the angle there. Let's see if we just roll this back again. Ah. 
then we end up with that but okay never mind that let's just get the the thing pointing up first let's solve that issue again then we can play around okay now that's more like it but the center of lift must not be in front of the center of mass ever <sighs> how can we do this can we if we roll this we can have the same problem again Although not as much, to be honest. You see, it still points upward, but it moves even more forward. Undo. Try roll this. Good grief. How are we going to solve this issue? The obvious answer is to move the wing back, but the wing is not supposed to go back. Even like that, it sits barely behind the center of mass. That's not what's supposed to happen anyway. <sighs> I'll think about this for a minute, comrades, then I will rejoin you. Well, one thing we need to do is still empty out most of these tanks, because... They are obviously clipping into the other tank in there, so that's not supposed to be full. I would say they're about to be, a, or supposed to be a third full. Just on the outer edge here where they're not clipping. That helps a little, but not really. These things are empty for sure. The problem is we'll always have the center of mass this far back. No matter if I now move the batteries forward or whatever, that's not going to make a difference. The fuel must be back here because it doesn't make sense that it's in the cockpit. That's not supposed to happen. What if we put fuel in the wings? Nope, just pulls it down. Uh, it remains a pickle, comrades. It remains a pickle. because we have so much fuel in there but that's supposed to be like that we didn't do anything unreasonable there so how 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 do we do this how do i do this well it's iffy comrades it's very iffy it's barely behind now all i've done was to roll the strike a little bit and the back panels there a little bit right there you can see they're slightly pointing down there I think that's the balance, comrades. It'll have to be like this. It's a very, very fine line there. That's why we need the SAS as well. Let's test this and see. But I don't want to have extra wings on this thing. Okay, so we are back on the runway. Let's see what we can do this time. I think the real issue here is we have to take off with extreme care. Just hard pushing up the flaps like that is not going to lead to success. We have to be very gentle here. And this is not a scenario that will happen anyway. We'll never be taking off like this. I just need us to test the thing. Is it stable during flight? Okay, we're going to make it right to the end. So let's do this gently. Gentle, gentle, uh oh no. That was a bad one. Maybe the other problem is that the thrust there provided by the engines is offset as well. I think what we're going to do is the following. Let's go back to the hangar. What I want us to do is to test the thing without the jet engine so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of them while we are in flight so to do that i'm going to use a structural no a coupling thing no it is a structural thing yes the hard points we'll use the big structural pylons how this is going to drop off i have no idea because it might hit the wings let's just get the center of mass and this lined up properly you see, it fires a little beneath the center of mass. Hmm. Of course, the glide will be unpowered, so that doesn't matter. 
Okay, center of lift is still micrometers behind the center of mass, but let's try again. We'll fire that and then we'll get rid of it. Save. Back again and Jeb and Bill and Bob and Valentina have no idea how many times they've died already, but that's for the best, I think. Let's just see, maybe this will be more stable. Even with all our reaction wheels, we still can't keep the thing going right, but mm, maybe now. What's that there? Some more other debris. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Okay, whoa, it still wants to flip very much. Oh, this has to be done so gently. Okay, oh, please don't flip, please don't flip. I just need you to behave properly. Okay, so I'm going to use the offset thing, the, the wing trim, so uh, Alt and S, that should keep us going straight. All I want to do is test. No, you fool! Ah. That's not good. I'll try again. How do we move the center of lift back? The only other thing is to replace these with a, an actual flap. I might have to do that. But for now, let's try again. I doubt if this will make any, any difference. It's probably going to have another fail now. Ay, 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 all right. Alt and S, please bring the trim down. More, for goodness sake. Nope, it's useless. Let's try messing with that back thing. This, I think, is the real challenge of the space shuttle. That will not do, so get rid of this nonsense in the back here. So now we are again ahead of it. We need something with more lift than these panels. Now these were the wing connector type Ds. Two of them would give us what? 0 0.5 wing area, so we need something with more than that. This gives us 0 0.86. That's too big though. And we had two of them and it still wasn't enough. What about an actual flap, though? And now we get the wild clipping there again. That's not quite enough to protect the engines there. But is it enough to help here? No. Let's put the strike back where it was. Now it just moves it back forward again. This is a pain. This is a real pain. And what's sticking out here? Why are these tanks sticking out here? Much better. <sighs> no, get rid of them. We'll use the bigger flaps. What about these ones? Oh, good grief. Now we'll put two... Actually, let's put one in the middle to start off with. And then two on the side.
yes, I could live with that, comrades. The thing is, I just want this wing problem solved. How do we solve this wing problem without magically putting more wings on? It's also not going to help if I put more mass here, because then we move the center of mass even forward, more forward. Oh, good grief. Well, it's a fun problem. I'm definitely not complaining here. Uh, what if we move this? Uh, no, 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 no. Not good. Definitely don't want it angled like that. Like this, it's not angled so much. But that's still a big problem. How do we solve this? We need more lift on the back. Let's just put this back to normal again. And what if we put an, another wing here? I don't want to do that, though. No, I will not do that. No. Okay, without these, they, the, the center of mass is better. I think. Yes. No, but we do want the center of mass to move forward. What am I talking about? We could put a dead weight on the front, but that's not necessarily the best thing. Hmm, what about one of these monopropellant fuel tanks? That's always good to have more monopropellant. That shifts it. Oh, that shifts it. How much does this weigh? Three tons, though. So we increase the mass of the shuttle by three tons. <sighs> That could work. You see, it's straight up there. That could work. That could make the difference, actually. That could work. That could work. These are real problems here, so we need real solutions. What if we do move it a little bit back more? This is going to be my longest video ever, and I actually don't have a problem with that. Let's save again and try again, because that is how we roll, comrades. That is how we roll. We don't do things by half measures on this channel, like some other channels. Hmm. We do things the real way. This is the original gangster. Hmm. So, yes, after that uh, hmm, embarrassing OG talk there, let's get off the ground. We still need a name for this shuttle. That should be the final act before ending this video. But I don't want to put anything out that's not acceptable, that I'm not happy with. And of course we now have extra control on these flaps on the back. I'm not sure if we want that. But we can turn that off very easily. Let's just see if the thing will fly. Now, Jeb, it's on you. Don't mess this up, eh? Come on, give us lift, Big Bertha. Not too much. Oh, 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 don't you do that. Don't you do that. Okay, it's much more stable. I'm not doing anything now, and it's flying without flipping over. Okay, okay, we found a solution. And I don't think we'll ever use up all the monopropellant during a flight, so the chance of that mass being used up on the front is not too likely. And even then, we'll still have the empty tank there. What? Is that all we've got? No, we're crashing like a brick. What the? Oh, I know why. Revert to the launch. Of course, it's because the pylons are not enabling crossfeed. 
Now we can burn for 31 minutes. Let's do this again. Right, so also let's put these off. Uh, I do not want you to do anything. You are off and you are off. And you are also off, yes. Just there to give us lift. Yes, it's going to work, it's going to work. We put in work, comrades. This video is twice as long as a feature film. Good grief. I should call this, uh, like, how, uh, no, the story of the space shuttle or something like a documentary. Ah, uh, well, the story of the Kerbal space shuttle. Okay, yes, yes, and we do have enough lift to actually pick up this heavy shuttle. So why is that, uh, the thing is not, there, there we go. So we just want to fly around a little bit and get some altitude without going too nuts here. You are losing control. No. No. Oh. Bugger. Take number 375. All I want is to get this thing in the air and just drop the engines and see how it will fly. That's all I want. Let's look at it. Uh oh Gonna have to work on that. The tank is sticking through there. Should be solvable. Good thing I checked. Now, come on, please, please, I just want to see what happens. Otherwise, we'll just have to do the flight test once we actually have the whole stack together. Okay, now just fly. You see, these thrusters are barely enough to keep us in the air. They are not, look at that. We're still losing speed here. That is not good. <sighs> quickly, 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 quickly. Well, there we are. Actually, I want to look something up. Was there ever a plan for a space shuttle escape system? I saw something like that. In the, it, it had like solid boosters on the sides. But I think that might be the Buran actually. No, those things didn't exist with a shuttle. Obviously they didn't, but I mean, they were never planned, it seems. What about the Buran escape system? Hmm. It's not showing me anything, but I have seen some Buran pictures where it had two solid fuel boosters on the sides. Well, that gives me an idea just to... Let's, let's get rid of these jet engines. Or put more on. Mm. Don't think it's easy to build a space shuttle. Mm -mm -mm. That is one of the hardest things you can do in Kerbal Space Program. And I mean specifically building a good space shuttle. Not some junker. Put the cross feed on and now it weighs a whopping 61 tons. And that's not even right there. Okay, still ish, but now we have this problem here, the clipping is out of hand. So how do we solve that problem now? Hmm. This gives you some insight into the uh, immense task it, the, the real engineers had to build the space shuttle. 
Of course, this has nothing on the real world, but still, it's an idea. 185 tons. So let's use smaller ones. Oh, no, I used the other one. So we'll, we'll just use two smaller ones. Will that work? Not sure. I feel okay with doing this. I know this is now again clipping and all of that. No, that's not going to work. But obviously we do need monopropellant in the front here because there is a set of monopropellant thrusters there. And we still have this major problem here. What if I take all the fuel out of there? That helps a little bit. But then it gives us even less fuel. Now we'll have to do something here. Let's use the smaller size. So that's half a ton. That's one ton. That's two tons. And it should not clip there. That's better. That's better, but only barely. Okay, so how much do we have now? Monopropellant 780. That's a good number. Save again and try again. So anyway, I'm going to auto strut these. Of course, it's a good thing you can do that while you are in a flight. Let's just see if we can get a sort of decent flight test out of this. Then I'll call this episode to a close because we can really only get a sense of how this will perform once we have the full stack. So it's certainly taking off, but there we have the same problem again. Should we even destroy the runway? <sighs> Let's try again. I'm not so easily dissuaded. I hope you are not either. Well, it seems rolling the strike a little bit can help us a lot there. So I think that's worth trying. So we'll just say again, auto strut and go again. The problem is also the fact that the center of lift is beneath the center of the mass, but there's nothing I can do about that because the wings are supposed to be there. In fact, they're supposed to be even lower than that. But uh, of course, we still have this bulge on the bottom there. Comrades, I think I also have a name for our shuttle, the Perseverance, because there is no other word that embodies our project as much as perseverance. It is the very essence of the Admiral Design Bureau. So, let's see. Hmm. Okay, gentle, gentle. Do not do anything crazy. Though, by definition, this whole project has been a bit crazy thus far, but I suppose you have to be a bit crazy if you want results. So, very gentle. Please don't flip over. Please, Perseverance, I'm begging you. So, okay, we're flying. F5, F5. Good grief, we're flying, comrades. It feels like a miracle. Uh, this is the feeling when Perseverance pays off. Hmm. Huh. Now, what I need us to do, because let's be real, the chance that we're going to land back at the runway after a flight is microscopically low. So I need us to do a test where we land on normal rough terrain, which might be a bad idea because, because, don't do anything crazy, let's not do that. Fine controls are your friend. The problem is, in this set up here because of the mod that I'm using I think it's the stock terrain something stock visual terrain or something like that it makes the trees and the rocks actual physical objects as I mentioned in the Apollo last mission there so if we land on normal terrain and we hit a tree we are gone we are gone as comrades so we are in big trouble if we cannot land back at the runway but I suppose 
we could aim for the desert, even though if we hit a cactus, then the thing blows up. Still, something, I guess. Let's just move away from the ground a little bit. Let's just keep moving. Much less fuel now. So actually, this will be a good simulation for when the fuel is not 100% full, which it won't be most of the time anyway. Of course, it's only burning liquid fuel, so it's a good compromise. Now, let's just get a few kilometers up. Log to prograde, please, if you are able, Jeb. Not too wildly, please. For goodness sake, you're killing me here. You know what? I think it's time to pull the plug. Let's see if we can reach four or five kilometers and then that's it. These engines are only barely able to lift us anyway. But they do. Which means that he, as heavy as this thing is, it still flies with these stubby wings, which is a good thing. Of course, in the real world, the bottom of the craft was a lifting vehicle, but we don't have that. Let's just keep it going for a little while longer. Yep, everything is clear here now. No tanks clipping in here. It's all underneath them. So that's acceptable. Okay, I think... Therefore I am. Uh, let's pull the plug right now. F5. Cut the engines. Get rid of them. And now they're hanging awkwardly on the wings. Bye-bye. No, don't eat us again. Okay, they blew up, not us, thank goodness. Hmm. Right, so all they say is off. Let's glide to the ground. That is what we do, isn't it? We're a glider. So the next thing I need us to do is to get the parachute ready. We are gliding and we're not flipping over. This is now without any controls. Okay, I am pushing us up, but we're not flipping over. That's a good thing. That's what we want. It's still very iffy and you still have to be super careful here, but... And uh, I see those things clipping through there, so I might... But this is a graphical glitch here. You can see everything is doing it. That's because of all the mods. I think that's, this is Scatterer's fault. But we still need to move this stuff back a little bit. Now it's gone again. You see? Scatterer. But that thing is still doing it a bit. Now we, I see some rocks on the ground. The trees are not showing up for some reason. We're gliding very nicely with the SAS on. So that, that I consider a success. And we just see, can we move up uh, without flipping? Actually, very nicely now. Can you believe it? But we're losing speed too quickly. We're going to hit the ground. Yeah, all the bodies hit the floor. Yep, 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 yep. Big problem there. The landing is the issue now. Okay, revert. Comrades, I think at this point I'm going to adjourn this session. We have been at it for a very long time. What I will do is I'm going to put these on auto strut. Well, they are already locked to the heaviest part. This one will be two, I think. Yes, that's automatic. Landing, landing is the most important part. We might need bigger wheels. I'll play around with it, you know, before the next recording, but next time we'll be working on the outer tank, and then I'll come up with solutions here. For now, I'll just save this again. I will share this craft with you, of course, uh, with the engines on, if you want to play around with it. So, save again. 
And I will see you next time, comrades. Do leave me some suggestions and ideas. How can we make this whole problem, especially now of the landing? I think the gliding is now fixed, more or less. It's uh, quite stable there, of course, with very careful controls. But how do we solve the landing now? Do let me know what you think. And I hope to see you next time, comrades. Do not please be put off by the length of this video. Perseverance, remember? That's our prized attribute, I think. See you next time. It's been a heck of a lot of fun to make this. And the adventure continues. Have a safe landing, uh, unlike our shuttle.